Hello and welcome to episode number 35 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is April 17th, 2017. I am Ryle McFlugel, and with me is Slappy Jones 2, and we are both at McFlugel.com. The show notes page for this episode is McFlugel.com slash 35. So late last week, we interviewed Idaho Congressman Matt Erpelding after he had a, a bit of a tough time talking about Idaho House Bill 206. So we'll get right into it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Today, we have a special guest with us who is kind enough to take some time out of his busy schedule to join us. We have Matt Erpelding, the Idaho House Minority Leader from District 19. Thanks for joining us today, Matt. Happy uh, so to be. Good. Yeah, thank, we're happy to have you. So our Libertarian listeners may remember Matt from a March 14th floor debate on Idaho's House Bill 206, which was to remove income tax from precious metals. And uh, this is what Matt said. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just, uh, I, don't, I don't have an opinion on this bill. However, I do have an opinion on facts. Facts are somewhat important. And if we say that gold is going to protect us from inflation, I want to point out that in 1868, gold was $27 an ounce. And today, gold is $1,218 an ounce. So. You can't say that gold is going to protect us from inflation when you have that type of a price range over the last hundred years. So I, I just want to point out that facts are important. So that was a bold statement, Matt, spoken very confidently, and I'm sure you got plenty of flack for it. Um, you know, we know inflation's a simple concept if you study economics. If not, it's commonly misunderstood. So before we get into that, we want to hear your side of the story. What happened? What were you thinking? What was going on? Well, it's a long story, but basically um, most most often when you're on the floor, I did not intend to debate on the House floor. I did not intend to say anything. In fact, I voted for the bill in committee. Um, But the uh, debate that I was hearing on the floor from a wing that had been frustrating me Okay. actually made me upset, which then made me do an ad hoc debate that was inaccurate is an understatement. <laughs> uh, and it's just part of it. And it, honestly, it, I think I survived five years without doing anything that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say it does. I can imagine it's tough. And this is one of, we would say, the, the issues we have with government general is that no one person or group of people can know everything about everything. It's just impossible. And so when you're put on the spot to talk, I can understand how something like that could happen for sure. Well, they were talking about, I mean, I, I don't remember, so I don't want to quote what other people were saying because sure. that'll get me in more trouble. But essentially, you know, if I buy a, a the, the bill itself had all kinds of problems. That's the first thing. Okay. The second I- thing, yeah, I don't, I don't I don't doubt that at all because normally, you know, it could be the we're going to save puppies bill where right. they have all sorts of terrible things. So if someone votes no on that, they say, oh, you're against saving puppies. So. Right. Um, but I, I got really hung up on why the, the argument was, you know, I own a house, which if I sell the house, I'm going to have to pay capital gains on it. Mm-hmm. And essentially that's as a result of inflation. I haven't changed the house. I haven't done anything new to the house. I just sell it for more money. Um, and it, it, it pissed me off that this bill was only going to provide capital gains relief for folks that had the money to buy tons and tons of gold. And I understand that I shouldn't have said anything. And I understand that what I said was wrong. Uh, but, I just was upset on the floor that day and stepped in a turd would be the way that I'd put it. <laughs> so if you had if you had the chance to go back and, and do it again, um, obviously you said you, you wouldn't have done that, but what what did you want to say regarding, no, regarding go back, gold? Like I said, I voted for it in committee. And uh, if I had to go back again, I, I probably would have stood up, stood up and said, you know, I don't think that we should exempt – uh, you know, just a couple capital gains 
income taxes. If we're going to talk about capital gains, let's reform the whole system. And uh, I didn't say that. Instead, I listened to the person who spoke before me and got upset and proceeded to run my mouth. Yeah. 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 Ironically, you actually did a very good job explaining how gold maintains its purchasing power. But um, I, I uh, Ron, uh, Ron Nate did that after me. He did do a very good job, by the way. <laughs> He's actually a good friend. We we get along quite well. We're on different sides of the fence, but uh, we have a very good relationship. So it was uh, interesting when I, I knew once I sat down, I was like, oh. That did not come out right. <laughs> I was going to say, were people, I, I don't know how it works when you're in there. When you sat down, was the guy next to you like, yeah, this is going to be on YouTube? No, no <laughs> nobody thought that. But, you know, it's the. it wasn't the YouTube video. It was the name calling that I got after that. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure people were yeah. relentless. <laughs> that was the first time I really just felt the unrelenting scorn of people who disagreed with me. Um, and for that matter, no matter what I said, they might have disagreed with me, but my words were so poorly chosen that I got called every name in the book. In fact, my, one of the first ones I got, I'll never forget this, was, uh, is your family tree in the shape of a wreath? And I wrote <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. This is brutal. Welcome. Well, I got, I got hundreds of them. Welcome you know, to and, the internet. <laughs> yeah, if, when you make a mistake like that in politics, you pay for it. And well, I, the beauty of the internet, and it's also like, it definitely taught me a lesson of, okay, I don't normally stand up and just go out, go all for it. And that's the reason you don't do that. Right. Yeah. So one question I had, I, I heard, um, I heard that Robert Wenzel sent you his book on the fed for, from a uh, economic policy journal. Did you get that? Did you take a look at it? Any thoughts on it? If you I will admit it is sitting on my desk at work um, since we've adjourned, the Idaho legislature has adjourned, and I own, I own a couple of businesses, and then I'm a, a subcontractor. So essentially, during the session, I don't make any money, and I have to go right back to work. But yeah. I got his book, and it is on my desk. Yeah, and I will. Cool, you I check it out. I would read it. Nice. Yeah, that's that's good. I mean, having the book is is sometimes the first step. I mean, I've got eighty thousand books that are sitting there that I said I'm going to read. So. Um, I've also spent, uh, so I drove to Salt Lake, I guess, uh, well, I did another long drive a couple weeks ago and basically just listened to, I mean, of all the things that I don't care about, it's this particular, <laughs> um, but now I've probably listened to 25 podcasts on both sides of the fence talking about particularly, you know, the beginning of the depression and kind of how gold was involved in that and just trying to wrap my head around it. Um, the whole thing is just really interesting to me. And again, like I said, I don't have a dog. I really didn't have a dog in the fight. Um, but I believe that. Uh, yeah. it, it is a really interesting concept, the fight over, you know, the gold standard and sound money and whether the Fed is a sham and whether inflation is entirely created in the heads of the people that are mm. um, in the in the e economy that we're talking about. I mean, the whole thing is phenomenal to me um but <laughs> i got sucked into it by saying something stupid hey well maybe you'll you know gain something positive out of it you always got to look at the uh, glass half full oh absolutely i think that I, I think that that's an understatement particularly you guys probably i don't know if you like these guys but the guys on freakonomics do mm -hmm. they do a pretty good job of explaining things at times and so I've really become accustomed to listening. They did a whole thing on the gold standard and the Great Depression, and those were very good podcasts on exactly what was happening. Now, um, I have a backlog of about 10 books that I hope to be through by the end of the summer, including the one from Robert Wenzel. I think that was his name. Yeah. Nice. Yep. So, uh, so I, since we have a libertarian audience – and I'm going to be slammed if we don't ask this question. And since we're on the subject of um, getting educated in this stuff, to give you kind of a, a redemption almost, do you want to explain briefly what ex inflation is and why the price of gold changed the way uh, you had described it? Well, I mean, it's a cycle, right? So if people think that 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 something's that 
uh, something's going to cost more, then they turn around and they charge more. And now that gold is particularly pegged to the dollar, it goes up with the inflation that's caused by the Fed. So I don't – actually, you should have told me I was going to need to give you a succinct definition. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no. Listen, I come onto your show halfway across we'll – Put you on the spot. Yeah. 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 I'm a friggin' rookie. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean it's, it's an amazing cycle how people – um, how inflation occurs and actually how the Fed to some degree is driving inflation to create a feeling of, I guess, economic prosperity, mm -hmm. um, growth, all of that. Uh, the, the whole thing is incredible to me. Yeah, Slappy, did you have something? I thought no, I cut I, you off. I, I just wanted to say <laughs> you've been a very good sport with all this. You've been very responsive, responsive and in admitting a mistake while – yeah, I think Raul and I would say a misunderstanding, but while admitting a mistake, not many politicians do that, and that's really cool, and we really appreciate you coming on to talk, and uh, I was looking at your bio, and I saw that you're into experimental education, which I think is awesome, and I think, uh, I think my education experience was boring and didn't, didn't give me that will to learn that I got when I was done school, which I did very well in school too, by the way. But uh, I love other ideas on how to educate kids. So if ever in the future you wanted to stop back on and talk about that or plug something you're working on, we'd be happy to have you. Well, I appreciate that. And like I said, I'm sure I'm going to get hammered now too from this show. So I'm really looking forward to that. I hope <laughs> I can apologize for anything. Yeah, no, no that's, that's not our I intent. Mean you know, the fact that, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to really, I wouldn't have asked that question if you didn't say you weren't looking stuff up, but, but the fact that, um, you know, you're, you're doing research and, and reading up on it and listening to podcasts and getting, getting information from, from both sides is, is appreciated. I know in the, in the libertarian world where we're kind of keyed into, um, uh, yeah, it was in the beginning, you were getting slammed really hard and then it came out, um, Robert Wenzel, posted that you replied to him in your email and with the email and said that, Hey, you know, I made a mistake. I'm going to take a look at your book. Um, and then a lot of, uh, libertarians came out and said, you know what? That's, that's actually really cool. And I don't know if you're familiar with or ever heard of Tom Woods. He's one of the, uh, the big libertarian, uh, names out there. Uh, mm -hmm. he's got, he's got one of the biggest podcasts, um, in the libertarian world there is. And, and he wrote an email out to his, uh, his email group saying that, hey, um, this is actually pretty neat of this Matter Pelton guy. He, you know, he made a mistake, but it looks like he's going to try to learn from it. So. so we're not all mad all the time. Right. Well, you know, we're reasonable. I, some, I have some pretty strong libertarian leanings, too. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that's got a true – you guys still there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, whether it be on uh, – we had a bill this year that was a bipartisan bill that was on civil asset forfeiture and civil asset forfeiture reforms. It passed the, both the House and Senate and was uh, vetoed by the governor. Oh. Oh. Um, my caucus was the caucus that was carrying legislation to decriminalize marijuana. Excellent. I mean we, we have a lot of alignments with libertarianism and – even when it comes to free market values, I think that we were talking about this before. There's a balance between what we need to regulate and what we need to let the market regulate. And um, the thing about being in politics is that you're still human and you're going to screw shit up. Of course, we understand. And, uh, right. And I, I think that the the politicians that have the hubris to not openly admit that they've made a mistake or they've misrepresented the topic, um, you know, I. I don't want to know that person. I don't want to be affiliated with that person. So that's that's kind of my approach to this whole political game. I'd rather be guiding mountains, to be honest. Yeah, I saw that too in your bio. That's pretty cool. Yeah. No, yeah, so uh, you know, appreciate your time. Um, you know, I hope that you you know you look at this, and it, I think you are taking this mistake seriously, and and you know, taking. Uh, the opportunity to, to better yourself with it. Um, continue. Actually, will you do me a favor before you let me go? Sure. Tell me your definition of inflation. Give it to me in like a succinct boom because I can describe it, but I don't have a good definition because I'm not an economist. I've never had to actually put it down on paper. Sure. 
it's a loss of the purchasing power of uh, your currency. Do oh. you, right. Yes. It's about as simple I'm, as this. So what I like. Agreement. Yeah. What, what I like to explain to people is say you had a society where there's $20 in the society. I have 10 and you have 10 and we voluntarily through voluntary interactions, we're trading things and our prices are set based on $20 in the economy. Then I find this counterfeit machine that prints a dollar up exactly the same as the dollars we have. Right. And I, I double the amount of money in the economy. Well, I get to spend the money first and I get to spend the money at the prices that are based on $20 being in the economy. After that money goes up, it bids the prices up. And so if you were sitting on a dollar or say someone else was in there and was saving a dollar, that purchasing power of, do- of the dollar got weaker because the supply of money just doubled, if that makes sense. Yeah. And in fact, if, if, uh, if I had a do-over, I would say it's the loss of purchasing power of your money. That is the most simple in your – in yeah, village idiot over here. <laughs> That's all yeah. right. So yeah, it's it's when so when people say like oh the the price of price of bread went up by you know twenty five cents that's inflation. Well, it's it's the result of inflation. Right, that's a symptom right. of inflation, so not I mean, the because uh, you know a price going up isn't necessarily inflation. All things equal. Right. Yeah. So I mean, um, I, as as bread. as libertarians, we would say that that uh, that's in the situation Slappy just described that that counterfeiter is the Federal Reserve. Right. And they uh, end up doing nothing but uh, skew the economy and, and the monetary you know, system. Maybe you could, and I don't know if you're still recording, but maybe you yes. could explain. I mean, the interesting part that, as I understood with the Great Depression was, as people were starting to lose faith in the currency, they were going in and getting their $20.67, which left the government with this challenge, raise the interest rate, uh, which would push us into a further depression, or... Uh, do what they did, and and England had come off of the gold standard two years before for the same reason, and I I've never heard a libertarian's view on what happened there. Well, I'll give you uh, this doesn't directly answer the question, but in, I think it was 1920 they had a very similar crash, and they freed the markets, loosened restrictions, and we don't even know about that. Uh, that was Calvin Coolidge. Yes, that was yeah. Calvin Coolidge. Um, so it, it it did happen before, and you know it didn't the, the involve. Other, other thing that's interesting with the creation of the Fed in that time in history, and you just said Britain came off or England came off the, the gold standard around that time, is it allowed them to fund World War One, which was right around the corner on credit, um, right. which on sound money they would have to raise the money in order to do it. And uh, a lot of lives were lost because of the wars in the 20th century. Right. And a lot of it was funded on credit, which is what the Federal Reserve does. Um, just a, a side note to it. Which, uh, yeah, exactly. Reminds so, me of a little place called Iraq. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Iraq, <laughs> Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, Syria, Somalia, Egypt, Libya. I yeah. mean, you name it. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's not, uh yeah it's not, uh, if you want to get us going on something let's you know, we can talk about let's talk war, war. yeah <laughs> but uh but anyway is there anything you're working on that you wanted to plug or anything that's going on in idaho you you want to let your constituents know about well we also eliminated the grocery tax i saw uh, that that was a pretty awesome thing and the governor vetoed that as well. So, oh, wow. you know, we make we'll I'll make mistakes, but I was all I, we I was, you know, all for civil asset forfeiture, uh, decriminalization of marijuana, eliminating the grocery tax. There's so many things we have in common. It's just unfortunate that I botched that thing. So I, you know, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to come on and BS with you guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, we're happy to have you. Thanks. Thanks for being a good sport about the whole thing, and hopefully. You don't get too much heat from this one. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope not. <laughs> At least try to take care of me. Do it. Yeah, to- yeah, we, we got your well. back. <laughs> thanks, hey, Matt. Thanks. thanks, Matt. Have a good night. You too. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. So that was our interview with Matter Pelting. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please leave us any comments. Let us know what your thoughts were. And uh, before we wrap this episode up, Rallo, do you have a free market story? 
I do, and it's kind of similar to ones we've had in the past in that it involves the site nextdoor.com, or if you're not familiar with it, that's a site where it's kind of a forum for your neighborhood where you can uh, post information or questions or, or things for sale for people in your neighborhood, and they can comment on it, all that good stuff. So when I bought my house, the people who sold it to me left a one of those portable basketball nets with the, you know, the big bases that you fill with sand or water. And I have no basketball abilities or really basketball interests at all. So But just, you do now, right? Oh what uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's actually one of the uh, examples I use for criticizing uh, the alt right in that uh, you know, it's like me beating a, th- a three year old in one on one basketball. It's not Which actually word? impressive. Which I'm not even sure that would, I could beat a three-year-old in basketball, but, but anyway. I digress. So it's it was just taking up room. It was in the back of my driveway, but on the grass. So it made it kind of a pain in the butt to mow the lawn back there. It added a, you know, a few minutes of trying to maneuver back there. And, and once I start using my tractor, which has the maneuverability of a bus, it'll make it that much more difficult. So all I wanted it was to be, it taken away. I didn't need any money for it. It still was in good condition. So I posted on nextdoor.com and also Craigslist too. I went, I used two different uh, sites to try to get rid of it. And someone immediately, actually a lot of people immediately (laughs) responded to uh, the ad and someone came over and, you know, took it. And while on the surface, it's like, oh, they got a, a basketball net for free. The thing was made, it was, it was really heavy. And so fortunately, it was two other, two guys, two men came over to, to take it. And so even though I didn't get paid any money or they didn't trade me any physical goods for it, they traded me their labor in getting rid of it. Because if I had to throw it out myself, I can't just have the trash men collect that. And I, think that's, I don't think that's a bulk pickup item either. So I would have had to call someone or hire someone to come and, and dispose of it for me. So Plus was, you, you, you profit from getting it off your property. Absolutely. Now I can, as I pull into my driveway every day, I can see the nice tree that was otherwise partially blocked by the stupid basketball net that I hated. And it saves me time mowing the lawn that, you know, 45 seconds or so. But, you know, it's that psychic utility that actually does matter a lot in transactions of course and also you know it it literally saved me money as i didn't have to pay someone to uh take it away or i didn't have to or maybe i i rent a truck and i load it onto the truck and i bring it to the dump Uh, you know any number of things um it saved me money because these guys came over and they were willing to trade their labor to remove it off your property right just like removing anything else absolutely so anyway, for those of you keeping track, we do have a running bet to see how often Rollo can work his tractor into the episode. And so <laughs> he did He did collect again this week. Yes. Every, every week. I'll find a way. Don't worry. So with that, before I continue to talk about my tractor, show notes page again for this episode is mcflugel.com slash 35, where you will find links to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher as well as a way to subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. So please uh, share with your friends or anyone else who might be interested in this kind of stuff. And, you know, especially with this episode, it's kind of something a little bit different that we did. We actually interviewed a, a, a congressman and kind of got a perspective on what was going through his head. So I think it's uh, can be something kind of valuable. Yeah, check it out. Like us, share us. Remember, we focus our attention, what our target market is. It's really any libertarians, but especially those just trying to learn the stuff or just getting into it or maybe aren't familiar with certain arguments. If you have fr- discussions with friends at work or school and uh, yeah, they need something to get them started, send them, send, send them to mcflugel.com. Absolutely. So have a great week. Yep. See you next time. Peace.